What's up, guys? Welcome to another Ask Vince podcast. I have the kid with me uh, today who's going to apparently ask me three questions, as we always do. Uh, but first, always got to make sure that um, you're doing your part. So if you could, uh, well, I know you they can, right? You're physically able to do this. Um, go ahead and leave us a five, how many? A five-star five star review. review. Uh, I think that's the amount of stars. If you can, can leave get. six or seven, do that. Yeah. Um, but leave us a five-star review uh, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast or apparently follow show now. Um, because the follow show button helps you get notified when we have new episodes uh, that come out. So thanks for so much for listening. We really, really appreciate it. We're growing this podcast very, very quickly. Um, and it grows even faster when you subscribe and leave us a five-star review. So thank you um, very much for that. And I kind of want to get right into it because I'll be honest with you today. I am... We're recording this a few days before Mastermind, and whenever we have a Mastermind meeting, it's kind of like, I, I literally might as well not show up to work um, to do normal tasks and activities uh, on the week of Mastermind. So um, I'm going to do my best to give you guys some good value and content today, but know that we are gearing up. Uh, some of the team is already down in Orlando. Um, I fly out tomorrow morning early. And uh, we're having our meeting down. We are 91 strong. The uh, biggest mastermind uh, the today, The biggest right? mastermind ever. Probably biggest mastermind ever, probably by almost 30 people. So we have a, a ton of new members that are coming. We have a ton of people coming on Guest Pass. We have a bunch of vendors that will be there. So it's the biggest mastermind great event, speakers. Uh, we've ever had. It's a great speaker lineup um, as well. So that is really what my uh, focus is uh, and obviously when you join the SPF mastermind, you get recordings, uh, of all these events. So if you do are listening to this and you do end up joining the mastermind in a couple months from now, which is, you know, probably a great idea, um, you will get access to the actual event that we're going to be putting on, um, in Orlando this weekend. Um, so no, if you're getting some FOMO from not joining the group yet, um, know that you'll be able to get access to the content when we put it out on the membership site that we give to the mastermind members. So that's my kind of spiel. Um, but Matt, cool. how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Ready for mastermind. Ready for mastermind. Ready to I have see some mastermind. Yeah. The, <laughs> I am the most hated person in the business on mastermind because you know, my mind is like, how do we make this the best event ever? And I just keep thinking of new things and, you know, the, the good part about my job is all I have to do is think of stuff and then other people do it. So, um, but that doesn't bode well for my popularity around the office. And so I keep coming up with these different ideas of stuff I want to do and stuff I want to have. And I'm giving everyone a lot more work. Everyone um, knows by now, though. I mean, we're all waiting for Friday morning right before Mastermind <laughs> when you go, oh, guys, wait, what about this? Yeah. Print this out, can you? Uh, but apparently if I'm not doing that, I'm not doing my job. So um, if I'm not driving people crazy around me, then I'm not doing my job. So, um, but yes, do we have any questions today, Matt? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. So the first question today is how do I create a better social media presence to generate organic leads? Um, so this is a, this is a good question. And I think that the one thing, you know, I, I've had a love hate relationship with social media. Right. I, I, I kind of hated it because one, I, I'm, I'm just honestly not a social media guy. Like you do not like all the things that are posted on my Instagram are not posted by me. They're posted by you and other people. And I don't post anything on my GFP social. And I, I'm not saying that that's a good thing. Like it's but that's just me. Like I do think if you're going to be marketing your gym effectively, that you should have a presence on social. But I think it's. Uh, really, really good to have a strategy. And I think that's what people don't have, right? They just blindly post a bunch of stuff on social, but there's no real rhyme or reason um, behind it. And so um, I guess what I'll share is, and again, since I don't really see these questions to like the minute before we start recording, um, I don't really have a time to prepare stuff. But the thing I teach in the six week new client surge program is that your emails, and you could add social media to this, um, the job of them is to educate, entertain, and inspire, right? So if you can remember those three things, so your social presence, 
um, when you're trying to reach out to now, I do believe that there's a whole strategy on using your private Facebook group as a whole separate strategy. And actually I think it's probably more valuable to have a very active members page than it actually is to have a good social presence outside. Right. And because, well, part of the reason was, is because when you do social, you know, based on what Facebook doesn't do is show it to everybody. Right. So they limit how many people actually see a, 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 a social media. And, I, and I'm talking specifically about social media, organic stuff. I'm not talking about paid Facebook ads. I'm talking about just a social media presence on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, that kind of stuff. And again, I'm not the guy to go to to learn about TikTok and other things like that. I'm just like full full disclosure. There's better people to go uh, for me. But if you're using Facebook and Instagram, which I believe is probably the right thing to do if your market is over 40. Right. As most of the people that follow me, they're marketing for adults and stuff like that. Um, but you, you, you got to have a strategy, a plan for success. And the first part of the strategy should be what is this designed to do? And I think it's a great uh, thing to go into it with. Hey, these posts are designed to educate, to entertain and inspire. And that kind of gives you a good balance and a good mix. Right. Because if all your posts are about education and all your posts are about you know, all right, you know, eat this thing and do this thing, then it's kind of like, all right, the guys kind of gets boring, unless you do it in a really good way, but it kind of gets like boring versus putting stuff on entertaining where you could do like an engagement question and you could do like a funny video or something like that. Or you post something in your gym of one of your trainers, like doing something stupid, right? That's entertaining, right? And then inspiration is where, you know, you could do uh, testimonial um, videos or testimonial posts and, um, you know, uh, posts from, you know, your members having success and all things like that. Um, there's your, uh, inspire part, right? So you're in your follow, you're putting your message out to people in the community to inspire them, um, uh, to, to, to grow. Now, one of the things that I think is very, very important that many people do not do is they just lack consistency, Right. They go on this flurry of posting one day and then they post six posts a day and then they don't post for three weeks and they come back. And I think if you want a good presence on social, you need to have a pulse of when you're going to do it and how often. Right. And I think that's part of the strategy. So the, so part one of the strategy is, all right, let's educate, entertain and inspire. And then part two of the strategy is, all right, how often are we going to post? Um, when are we going to post? who's going to post, right? Who's going to, who's in charge of this, which is a whole nother conversation, right? That I'll get into that. I won't even, I won't get into today. Um, as I don't have the time in the, in the context and the framework of this, of this podcast. Um, but, uh, who is going to do the posting? Uh, it could be a collection of multiple people. It could be, you know, you hire someone to do it for you. Um, but you need to have a point person, um, uh, of who's doing all this stuff on uh, social media. So that's kind of really, if you kind of take those three things, that's kind of helps you formulate a strategy. It's educate and entertain and inspire. It's the pulse of posting, right? Um, and then it's who's in charge of it. If you can kind of, kind of nail those three things down, I think you'll have a good, um, a, a better presence um, on social. But and to, to kind of dig into that second one a little bit, I mean, since so few people see it, we had best success with social when we were doing five posts a day, right? So at GFP, we would do five posts a, a day and we took a ton of pictures at once. We wrote about 50 bits of content and then we just pretty much spun the wheel and matched up the picture with the content and then we were actually reused the content. That was our best strategy uh, with social and actually we gave that out at the mastermind meeting a couple meetings ago um to the gym owners with all i think it's like 50 social media posts but we kind of created engaging funny content and then we matched it with good pictures that were taken by a professional photographer of of members of our gym so we didn't like use stock photography we actually took pictures of members in our gym and then we posted that stuff and then the, our social media person really, really was in charge and he had 50 pieces of content to use. He had, you know, 500 pictures to use. And I was like, all right, I want five posts a day. Here's your, here's what you got to use um, to do that. And that was a really, really effective strategy 
um, for a social presence. Um, so it, it, actually, if you are interested um, in that packet, um, we I'd be happy to share it with our listeners. Yeah, we can put it in the description, the show notes. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to. I don't want to do that because I want people to actually go through a little hoop to get it. Right. I'm All not right. just going to put it in there. You got to reach out to us. So you're going to. Uh, what is your? Are you mad at Vince Gabriel? Yeah. So I'm going to have you send an email to mad at vincegabriel.com. Put social media packet in the subject line, and then Matt will send it back to you. And it's a, it's a, it's well worth the time that it takes to send Matt an email, um, and then we'll send you the packet uh, of um, of our social media. Uh, it's like I think it's like 50 different posts and. I think there's a bunch of how to stuff in there as well. It's kind of cool. Um, so that's my answer to the first one. But uh, send Matt. It's Matt at VinceGabriel.com. Um, and then put social media packet in the subject line and we'll get it out to you. That way I know you mean business when you reach out. Yeah. 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 You know who's really good at that, by the way, the social media, the educate, entertain, inspire. Um, if you're really good, you can do them all at once. And someone who's been doing it really well recently is Ben Settle on Twitter. He hasn't been, he, he's been pretty active recently and he has a series now that he's been doing where he takes the Bible and he uses that as a marketing guide. It's very fascinating. I recommend anyone who's on Twitter or anyone who's not on Twitter even to, uh, to go check that out. It's very fascinating. It educates, it entertains, and it inspires all in one. And I think that's a great template to follow is just pick something that's wacky and outside the box. Well, it sounds like you're like a little bit. Ben Settle guru fanboy. So uh, little bit. I have some good news for you. Ben Settle will be speaking at the July Mastermind. So I hear. Oh, you, know, you did hear that. Yeah, that'll yeah. be exciting. Yeah, yeah. So you have Ben Settle. He does. He very, very sell. Ben Settle is one of the top marketers in the space right now. Um, very, very, uh, very smart dude. Um, really cool. Still has a, a, a snail mail print newsletter, which I've been <laughs> a subscriber of for the last three years. So I have like, I don't know how many. No, I think more than three years. So I have, uh, what, what does he do, 12? No, I have, I have, well, it's probably five years now that I've been a subscriber. So I have tons of email players. Actually, my daughter knows Ben Settle because she sees <laughs> the email players uh, newsletter all over. But yeah, Ben will be speaking at the next Mastermind meeting. Um, cool. Very cool. All right, so on to the next one then. How do I begin to document systems for my business? Yeah, Um Remember, I think it's important to recognize what systems are for, right? And systems are to um, not make same mistakes over and over again. Mm. Uh, and, and if you just think about like a recipe, that's 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 the best way to think of a system, right? This is, think of a recipe, right? And let's say you want to, you know, bake cookies. And instead of like using a recipe, you know that you need flour you need sugar you need chocolate chips and right and you just randomly take some flour randomly take some sugar and you randomly take some chocolate chips and you try to make cookies right and let's just say that one day you make cookies and they come out perfect and like oh my god that's the best freaking cookie i've ever had in my entire life well, wouldn't remember you how you want did it. the recipe? Yeah. Wouldn't you have wanted to written down how much flour you used? Wouldn't you want to have written down how much sugar? How would you have written down how many eggs and all that stuff? And know that, hey, that amount of ingredients produced the perfect result. And all I need to do is write it down. And I can now have that cookie anytime I want and replicate that. And that's like kind of what a system is, right? Now, I do think that you know, sometimes people get so crazy and I know the E-Myth is a great book and a lot of people talk highly about it. And I still think it's one of the a game changing book too. I, th but I think it's more valuable in teaching you the E-Myth is more valuable in teaching you not to become a technician and get so entrenched in the technical side of your business and actually to embrace being an owner and embrace being a CEO. Um, but I do think they take the systems documentation a little too far in terms of it's for us, it's like a recipe, but it's really not like a recipe because you can have two trainers that teach a goblet squat. And yeah, they're both saying knees out and they're both saying, you know, grab the kettlebell here. Right. And they're using some similar cues, but it could be a total um, 
different approach that they that they do that with. So I, I think that the whole it's wishful thinking to have to think like we're not a gym is not McDonald's, right? It's not always an exact recipe, but so I think you need to, and EOS has a great rule, you need to document the 20% that creates 80% of the results. And that's a way to look at it. So do you need this massive manual? Like Matt, I, when I first opened my gym, I spent so much time writing these exact manuals. And like, I mean, I probably wrote a 300 page training manual when I opened my gym and we never freaking freaking used a, you know, an eighth of it. Like we used, well, we probably used less than 20% of it. Right. But I spent all this time and all this energy creating this perfect manual and this perfect system. Once and we never been using it. And so I think a lot of people, they spend a lot of time documenting these perfect systems, especially in these stage one gym owners, you know, where they read the email, they're like, oh, I got to document all my systems. And they spend all this time and they're spending all this time documenting systems. They have no one to communicate the systems to. And then at the, at the same time, they're not growing membership. Yeah. yeah. Right? You're so, building a system that doesn't work live, right? Yeah. Because you've built it in isolation. You haven't seen it tested yet. Exactly. And so what, yeah. what they need to be doing, if you're a young gym owner, a young business owner, you need to be spending your time on getting to a critical mass of customers, getting to a higher level, more clients to pay you more money so you can hire more trainers so you can actually need the systems, right? If it's you and one other part-time trainer, you don't need systems. Like, just get out there and kill it. And, and that's the point in time in your business where you're trying to figure out the recipes, where you are saying, how much flour should I use? I don't know if it's this, like, perfect, you know, system. But, but as you grow as a company, those systems become more important. Stage two and stage three, you got to have those things um, down. But I guess, um, uh, you know, you need a, a, a system for sales. You need a system for marketing. You need a system for operations, the, the scheduling and the billing side of how people pay you and all that and making sure you have a good software uh, to do that with. Um, you need a system for human resources, how your trainers get paid and, you know, how you communicate when they get hired, what they need to do and that kind of stuff um you know again i'm doing this off the cuff so i'm probably forgetting one or two um you know a system for you know your retention right how do you keep clients a system for onboarding right all that stuff is really really important uh, how you I, I one of my favorite systems is how you onboard a new trainer like of all the systems that you need you got to have that one down because if you onboard a trainer improperly, one, they're probably going to suck, right? And two, they're probably not going to like the experience because people decide whether they're going to quit a job in the first 90 days. There's research on it. And um, if the 90 days is really, really great and they have a great experience, that they're going to want to stay there. If all of a sudden they're like, oh, this guy just threw me into the fire and I'm not learning much and I'm just like doing shit, you know, they're probably not going to think highly and maybe they're going to start looking and putting their resume on indeed so um that process so so you guess you need to document systems but you don't need to copy the mcdonald's manual document 80 document 20 percent that creates 80 percent of the results document the most important things identify what's most important in your business to be repeated over and over and just document 20 percent of that cool sounds good <laughs> The third and final question. Matt always boosts my confidence. <laughs> That's why I'm here. So how do I keep my coaches motivated and learning? Once you have those systems to onboard them properly, that is. Yeah, I, I, I will say this. If you don't do it, you're going to probably have most likely have a mediocre business. Mike Boyle taught me this. Um, I guess Mike read the book, The One Thing. And the what the premise of the book the one thing was what's the one thing you can do to make your business better and like if you only did this one thing that your business would still be in good position it says there's like a whole line i don't remember it though um and boyle came up with staff training he was like staff training is the number one thing if we do staff training that our business just will get really really good so he invests in the staff and they have the famous mike boyle uh weekly meetings <laughs> that they actually videotape and put on I don't know where Mike puts them, um, but they, they, they videotape the meetings and you, there's a way to get access to it. I'm not quite sure. Um, 
but they value that as the most important thing in their business, right? And I, I 100% agree that is if your staff is getting stale and they're not growing and they're not learning, um, you know, there's a, there's a diner in my community that it's, it's one of the most popular restaurants in New Jersey. They're voted best diner like every year. And they're just like, they're always on the cutting edge. They're always bringing new stuff in. They're using organic spinach and they got fresh wild caught fish, right? And they're just growing and growing the business and they're using marketing and they're using emails and they got QR codes. So like, it's a very, and I know the owner, Jimmy, um, who's a friend of mine and we talk about stuff all the time, right? But you just go in there, you can tell like they're, the guy is always learning and always growing and always trying to take and make this diner better. And then you go to a normal Jersey diner, right? Right. And it has not changed in 44 years. Breakfast number one is eggs and toast and choose your meat, bacon, right? Breakfast number two is French toast and breakfast number three is pancakes, and it's like nothing has changed in 44 years. Well, that's the diner that is getting their ass kicked by my buddy, Jimmy, right, who's innovating. Now, I do think you can innovate too much and get too cute and too fancy. And Jimmy has not gotten there. He's done a great job of getting to the point where this is a very innovative, but it's still a diner, right? It's not like a high-end restaurant. It's a diner, right? right they you got, go there, you're going to get, get your regular. You can get eggs, you yeah. know, at 11 and 30 at night, right? Or you can get a steak, or you can get shepherd's pie, or you can get a burger, or you can get Greek food, or you can get Nutella French toast, like, or right. you can get a cheesecake. Like, you can get whatever you want at any time of the day, no matter what time of day it is. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, though, I can't get a baked potato at 7 o'clock in the morning, which I was very upset about. Really? I, wanted, I wanted a baked potato for breakfast one That's day. That's his next innovation. Yeah, I guess they Learn I guess how to they bake a potato start, early in the morning. I guess they start the baked potatoes in the afternoon for some reason. Anyway. Right. But um, they're constantly learning and they're constantly growing um, and they are constantly packed, constantly packed. And even even to the point where he bought um, one of the three liquor licenses about seven years ago, they bought a liquor license. They never had liquor. And so now I can go to the diner and while I'm waiting for my food, I can have a burger. <laughs> And it's like, it's freaking awesome. Like, it's like That's Jimmy cool. is like always thinking about it. It's always, he's always on the cutting edge, right? Um, and I think the same thing needs to happen with gyms. I think the same thing needs to happen Not with the, the liquor owner. Not the liquor license. And what's that? Not the liquor license part. Well, Maybe man, the liquor license You probably do well. Um, That'd be cool. <laughs> but the coaches uh, are constantly learning, constantly growing. Now, how do you do that? One, I think it's got to stem from you. It's got to stem from the owner. You have to value it. You don't think if you do not, if you, if the owner does not value growth and learning, then your staff will not value it either. That is a 100% fact. Okay. You have to value the owner. You have to set the tone for growth and learning. You have to demonstrate that you're doing it. You have to demonstrate that it's important to you. You have to create situations where they have those opportunities. You, you need to send them to seminars. You need to buy them books. You need to bring in speakers to your gym. I mean, how many times did I bring in Charlie Weingroff to speak to my clients? I brought, I brought in Charlie Weingroff, Martin Rooney, Eric Degatti. I've brought in so many different people to speak um, to my trainers directly. And that's a great way to do it where they all learn. But are they getting out to seminars? Are they getting out to certifications? Um, that stuff. It's 100% something that you need to be investing in. Uh, we have a budget for it at GFP. We spend, we have to spend a certain amount of money on our coaches' education. Um, it's just something that's got to be baked and built into your business. So um, that is how you do it. You really do it by demonstrating that it's of high value activity that needs to be done, and then setting up opportunities for them to do it on a consistent basis. Very well said. From the employee end of it, I can say you cannot understate or overstate rather the value of that. Like I handle all your marketing. Well, at least getting it out there. You're the brains behind the operation. But every new book you give me, every new course that you put me through, it gives me a slightly different angle and it keeps me thinking of new ways to, to track marketing analytics, new things to look at. Like for example, I've built a system this past few weeks around looking at Instagram hashtags to see how we reach 
new people because that's a big driver for this podcast is Instagram people. So we're looking at maybe different location hashtags or different industri industry hashtags, that kind of thing, and tracking that information. I wouldn't have even thought to do that if you didn't keep me looking at these books, looking at these courses, and just learning new things all the time because it keeps you <laughs> educated, entertained, and inspired. There you go. Well, and, and so it's the same thing. So I have four companies, right? And, you know, so I bring you books all the time. I put you through courses all the time, you know, as, you know, the, 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 the head of marketing for, for GF, for not GFP, for, um, for FBU. Um, but I brought a book into Mike Mullen, right? Who runs GFP and runs grit. And I brought him the book the other day, how to, how to be a great boss. Right. And so I'm constantly thinking about that. It's one of the most important leadership lessons to learn is what tools do you need to give your people to succeed? What courses do you need to put them through? What books do you have to read? What conversations do you need to have with them? What articles do you need to email them? Um, always be on the lookout. What podcast do you need to send them? I sent Leo a podcast over the weekend, you know, about about something. Um, so, yeah, it, it not only applies to, you know, I have four companies, but you know, it applies to all of the companies. It's a, it's a core value essentially, right? It's gotta be a core value where you value growth and learning um, for sure. So I'm glad to see uh, you're liking it. So that, the, but that's a good example though. Um, Cause I dump a lot of shit on you, right? You do. I'll like say, I'll say, <laughs> I'll, I'll dump a 300 page book on, a, on Matt's desk and he's swimming in an ocean of work I had him do. And I say, read this and give me a report on it by the end of the week. And he does it. And he does it. And sometimes, you know, I can tell maybe he's, I, I think you're usually pretty good with it. I think you like learning and yeah. like that stuff. But that's the other thing, too, is no, finding up. people that yeah. that like that stuff, right? Because if all of a sudden I threw a book on Max's ass and he's like, oh, shit, this guy asshole's reading me, giving me read another book. Um, but Matt is someone that values that learning and values that education. Um, so it's a benefit to him and, 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 and in his future, right? So I'm investing in your future, it's possible that you're you're not going to be 84 years old working at FBU. It's very possible that that could be the case. Well, when I'm 84, I right? hope. <laughs> right? Um, hope but yeah, relaxed. when you're 84, yeah, you're yeah, probably yeah. hopefully not going to be doing digital marketing. No. Right? Um, right? But but hey, this this learning and education that you're doing um, is going to you know help you in your life, no matter what you end up doing. And John Maxwell has a quote um, because a lot of people fear this. Well, I'm going to invest in them and I'm going to buy them books and send them courses and I'm going to invest and then they're going to leave with the free education that I gave them. And Maxwell has a quote. It's like you can either um, not educate them uh, or you can either educate them and pay for their education and invest in them and they may leave, okay, with your free education or they stay and remain dumb. Right. That's the, uh, right. that's the quote. Or they stay and remain dumb because you didn't do your part as a leader to educate them. So that's all I have to say about that. It's the only way to guarantee, not guarantee, but at least if you don't do it, you guarantee that they're not going to bring more value. Whereas if you do it, at least there's that chance. Yeah. And that grows your business even faster. And that's great. one of the reasons why, too, um, we have the entire KISS marketing team coming to Mastermind. The entire, uh, it's not the entire GFP team is going to Mastermind because we still have to have some people stay and train. Um, but Mullen's going down. Leo's going down. Like, you're coming down. Um, everyone's coming to Mastermind. And here's why. Because a Mastermind is like, a, it's like blatant a firecracker up your butt. Not just for business and learning, but for inspiration and motivation and personal development. And so we look at that as, as, as runners of a mastermind. That's a huge value to our staff to be able to go through. Think of someone that works for Tony Robbins. And, hmm. and their job is to go and run events where they're getting literally lit up on fire um, you know, by Tony every weekend. It's like, that sounds really bad. They're getting yeah. literally lit on fire by well, Tony. <laughs> well, he does have the fire walk, right? Uh, right, which I true. Which I've done, which is a complete hoax, but... Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's very rigged, but it's, it's interesting. Um, but I love Tony Robbins. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, so that's definitely all I have to say about that. So I think we're going to put a bow on this baby. I think so. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much, um, for coming by the podcast. I'm going to let Matt do the outro from now on because I'm out of words, uh, for the day, but, um, I will see you guys next week peace see you 
What's up, guys? Thanks so much for listening. Do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. This way you'll get notified when we get new episodes come out. And if you really, really loved it, I'd truly appreciate it if you left us a five-star rating. So thanks so much. If you're looking for more free stuff uh, from me, head over to Vince's Free Book. Com. You'll get a free copy of my marketing book and just head over to Vince's Free Book.com and I'll send you a copy. Thanks.